I'm going to run you guys through um, what happens when you research. And we're going to talk about different key skills as we go through the research cycle. So when you research, the place that you start, and I know you guys kind of all understand the idea of, of the research cycle, or you wouldn't be in English 102. You start with an idea. Then you strategize about where that idea might take you, what it might look like, where you might look for information. Then you actually do the looking. You look at your results, see if it's relevant to whatever you're trying to do. You refine your search if it's not. If it is relevant, you get the data that you need for your citation, and you keep it so you're able to cite your sources or do your quotes. And then the next part is you present the information that you've gathered, which would be delivering a PowerPoint or um, doing the assignment for a mind map or something like that. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that sound about right? OK. The very beginning of this cycle is talking about your assignment and exactly what you're required to do. So you guys have some specific topics that you are interested in. Let me think about this. I think we're going to talk about um, society is dead. We've retreated into the I world. And we're going to make a mind map for that. OK? Does that sound good? OK, so um, what I want you guys to do while I'm making the mind map is participate, but I also want you to take notes. And don't everybody turn in this mind map to Jean tomorrow, because she's here and she'll know. OK, so this is the way that I do mind maps. Everybody does mind maps differently. This is you translating the picture in your mind of how this information it relates to each other. So in the very middle, what you normally do is put your idea, OK? So I'm going to put um, dead world. And then I might say equals I world. So I'm not going to write out the whole thing. I'm just going to put a couple of key concepts there, OK? Now, if I had to branch this out and think about reasons why maybe this was true, arguments that I could use to justify my point of view, so maybe right here we can put the technology, OK? And maybe as part of our argument that the technology is pervasive, we can look up statistics on Market saturation. Do you guys know what I mean by that? How many people do you think have cell phones? How many people do you think have iPods? How many th people do you think are on Facebook? OK. So we can do um, stats on the tech. Or I'm just going to put market saturation here. OK. Now, I'm going to pause for just a second. And I'm going to tell you guys that the way that I talk and think the way that you talk and think about stuff is different than the way that the information is going to be organized. Your job is to put down how you think on your mind map, OK? So if you don't know the word market saturation, put the word that you would have chosen, all right? So stats on market saturation, maybe what else we might need are Maybe we could have the history and the growth of that market. Maybe the forecasting. So I'm going to put history, growth, forecasting. OK. Now, is there anything else that you guys can think of? to reinforce your technology argument. <coughs> OK, so this is just about the technology. OK. I liked your word desensitized. So what could we use for desensitized? 
how might you guys actually dig up proof to prove that we're desensitized, that we're focused on other things, maybe because of our earphones or distractions? Where, where would you go? How would you strategize this? Okay, I know this is tricky, and that's why we're doing this. So what I'm thinking is maybe right here we're going to write distractions. And from here, now if this isn't right, we can change it. If it doesn't feel right, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to put distractions here, but you know, I'm thinking part of the I world is entertainment, okay? So I think we'd be better off if we thought of the internet, of iPads and iPods and cell phones and texting, less of a distraction, because where can we really go from there? And more of entertainment. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, all right. So this is how you're going to do your mind map. And basically what you're drawing out is a map of the things that you might use as proof, the way that you might argue your points, and this is going to help you develop your research strategy. So it's a key kind of exercise. So let's put here entertainment, okay? Okay, so entertainment. <coughs> So I think that this could be, we could put distraction down here. Maybe under distraction, it could be a distraction from life, it could be a visual distraction, it could be an audible distraction. There's all kinds of things that we can use for that if we want. Maybe what we need to do is do something that says pros and cons, right? Okay. And one of the things is that it has benefits. And maybe the benefits could include education, a feeling of connection. Um, one of the things that they've researched in the um, online communities is that it gives a chance with, um, for people with rare diseases to contact each other and form support groups. So I'm going to say um, support, OK? I think for entertainment, and this is where it gets kind of tricky, right, is for the pros and cons, and you know what, You're, this is ever evolving. It's not stuck in stone, okay? But we could put something like, how about we do this? Let's put games, okay? And there, let's put games, let's see here, let's put, let's see, benefits, let's put time wasters here, okay? Do you guys ever hear um, or feel like people who play video games are just wasting their time? Do you ever feel like that when you play games on your, yeah? yeah. Okay, okay, so that's a time waster, and it's a time waster because of like these different reasons, right? Okay, but what if there's proof that that actually keeps your brain sharp? So instead of a time waster, why don't we put time sink, okay? And let's put your Kindle idea, okay? And let's put the game idea. The other thing that I think is really interesting, and this is from the point of view as an old person instead of a young person, is Okay, so some of the stuff that people talk about on cell phones and online, to me, is very private. And people talk about it at the top of their voices, like the problems that they're having with their credit card or their latest STD that they're being treated for. So, um, and, and that, the content isn't the point for me. For me, it's that you can never get away from your cell phone, okay? So you're always linked, it's constant. So maybe this, I don't know, how would you guys say that? Got to help me come up with a word. Always like preoccupied. OK. 
Okay. 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 So you guys, yeah, I'm going to put obsessed. I think what you guys are doing and what we're doing together as a class is really good. And, and you'll notice that we're kind of doing some good work. We're developing our list. There's some holes, but we can fill those in. I don't know what this is going to be. But I think that there's one here that we should think about. So we've talked about the I world. We've talked about the distractions of the technology. What about the dead world? Do you guys know your neighbors? So I think if that's the title that you guys might want to think about, how would you describe the dead world? Yeah. Okay, so that's good, so disconnection. But then how would you research and prove disconnection? Maybe they're being social, but not in the physical world. Maybe they're being social in the I world, okay? So let's put that. Let's put social online instead of reality, okay? Don't we have expectations about how we will interact in the real world? OK. So maybe that's part of what we need to talk about, is um, social courtesy or social expectations. OK. At this point, one of the things that I, I think I reserved is for a solution. or maybe proving that the world isn't dead, that it's enhanced, okay? So what would we call this? Should we call it enhanced reality? Yes. Okay, I think that sounds good too. There's other stuff going on, like online romance, and things like that. So how many stories have you guys heard about people who've connected romantically online? Okay. So do you think that that's something that we should include? Yes. Okay. So um, enhanced reality, maybe I have my real life and my eye world connections. I don't know how we would say that. Let's put social and romantic connections, okay? So maybe we can use those things to argue that the world isn't dead, that it's only enhanced by the I world. What else would you guys say? Yeah? It keeps um, family closer. And I have family all over the world, and I can talk to them every day, whereas I would never even think to see them. You know what? I love that. That's perfect. That's such a good point. So if we're down here in the dead world, let's put something like impact on families. Okay? So the impact on families. Now we can develop that, but I think that's a really good point. So this dead world, maybe it's a dead world and we do live in an I world. If it was me, I think somewhere in here, I would put distracted driving. Like really bad stories of what happens. So I'm going to put something here like the dangers. But don't you think that's more of a, that's way. Um, so I want to talk about the dangers. If this is a dead world and we've retreated into the I world, am I going to be supporting my point if I talk about how the incidence of online invasions of privacy, um, sexual predators, um, distracted driving, is that going to reinforce my point? OK, so let's stop here. Do you guys all have this, what we've gotten so far? OK, this is just an example, all right? Now, what we would do 
then to do our research is to pick a branch and think about how to translate that into a search. 